Hi, this is FAIR TV. I'm Peter Hart. This week, the Bradley Manning trial got underway. The court-martial is, of course, linked to the hundreds of thousands of documents that Manning allegedly shared with the website WikiLeaks. The case has not exactly suffered from an abundance of corporate media coverage, given the tremendous significance of those leaked documents and the circumstances of Manning's detention, that in itself is revealing. So day one of the trial saw a heavy media presence at the court in Fort Meade, and what we got was, well, here's NBC Nightly News. The court-martial of the man who may have put U.S. military secrets in the hands of Osama bin Laden started today, the so-called WikiLeaks trial. Now that's a reference to the fact that the government is arguing that the documents Manning leaked were published at WikiLeaks and therefore Osama bin Laden could read them there. That's an astonishing leap and one that should prompt critical coverage from journalists who are, after all, in the business of giving the public information that others think should be kept secret. Well, in another military courtroom, Army Sergeant Robert Bales pled guilty to what could be the most horrific atrocity of the Afghan war. Last March, Bales walked from a base to a nearby village and killed 16 people, mostly women and children. The news that Bales was planning to plead guilty didn't elicit a lot of media attention, and his actual testimony was covered more broadly. But the most unusual and perhaps disturbing account of the massacre came from CBS Evening News on May 29th. Correspondent Elizabeth Palmer went back to that village in Afghanistan, and the point of her report seemed to be that the people there have moved on. She spoke to an army captain who said they have no worries about civilian revenge attacks. A tribal elder affirms that they don't blame the United States for what happened. And one man whose father was killed is now a police officer. A local police captain tells CBS that he supports the U.S. military being there, all of which leads to Palmer's conclusion. A glimmer of hope and resistance emerging from one of the grimmest chapters of the Afghan war. Now, other journalists have also written stories about the aftermath of this atrocity. The Associated Press, for example, has filed a couple of stories that undermine CBS's rose-colored takeaway. One story quotes a local man saying, for this one thing, we would kill 100 American soldiers. And in a May 16th piece, a woman who saw Bales shove a pistol into her baby's mouth before killing her husband said, I want to see him dead, then I can let go. CBS evidently couldn't find that perspective. And finally, a staple of TV news is the gotcha. Here's some tape of a politician saying one thing, and here's some tape of the same politician saying something very different. They're good when they work, but here's a not gotcha from Meet the Press. But I'm focused, too, on the president and uh, the idea of making no apologies and then appearing to make apologies about all of this. Here was the president, middle of last month, when he came out, when the seizure of the AP phone records first service, this is what he said. Leaks related to national security can put people at risk. They can put men and women in uniform that I've sent into the battlefield at risk. And yet then, within a week, he's changing his tune. This is what he said then. I'm troubled by the possibility that leak investigations may chill the investigative journalism that holds government accountable. So one comment emphasizes the danger of leaks, and then the other one talks about the danger of leak investigations. That's a flip-flop, right? Well, no. In that first speech, Barack Obama also said this. Now, the flip side of it is we also live in a democracy uh, where a free press, free expression, uh, and uh, the open flow of information helps hold me accountable, helps hold our government accountable, and helps our democracy function. Now, in that second speech, the one where he talked about accountable government, he also said this. As commander-in-chief, I believe we must keep information secret that protects our operations and our people in the field. So on the whole, the two speeches were basically the same. Gregory used deceptive editing to manufacture a gotcha. But the real story here is that the White House has actually been all too consistent in its efforts to silence whistleblowers and discourage critical investigations of its actions. I'm Peter Hart. Thanks for tuning in to FAIR TV.